the question really has to be asked. Why are the Conservative Party, and especially the Brexiteers, in such a rush to get Brexit done? To a point where it will actually physically and, you know, monetarily damage the United Kingdom. Remember, this is meant to be the party of business, the party of fiscal responsibility. And yet, nothing in their Brexit negotiations or even the handling of this entire um, crisis, in this entire crisis that's about to unfold, has anything to do with those types of parameters. And it's puzzling. Why? Because you'd think that a party that is clearly in fate when the world is facing a drastic an incredible unseen world uh, economic uh, recession which we haven't seen for decades why on a, all of a sudden are we rushing to try and leave this again even though we've already left it why are we not trying to extend the transition period to get a deal and give us more time to negotiate this deal. Apparently, as Boris Johnson said, it was, quote, oven ready. Well, where is that oven ready deal? It's not there. Quite frankly, because Boris Johnson, in an attempt to get Brexit done, signed up to a political declaration and has now decided to backtrack on that promise, showing that, well, the UK will sign up to a promise and then break it five minutes later because it decides that it doesn't want to sign up to it. What a great way to signal the start of, of global Britain by showing that we are completely untrustworthy and that Britain will not respect any treaties or any um, contracts that it signs. Uh, but that's the least of our worries because we turn today to the London Economic. In this article, Britain is about to export to Europe for the first time in 46 years, and it's woefully underprepared. So Britain is about to export goods to Europe for the first time in almost half a century. And according to experts, businesses and the, uh, uh, and the government are woefully unprepared for what this actually entails. In 2020, and for the previous 46 years, delivering a lorry load of product to Berlin has been exactly the same as it was delivering it to Birmingham. No special export certificates, custom declarations, or border, or border inspections are needed. And no duties are paid. Goods travel anywhere in the EU with a simple invoice. They're delivered rather than exported. But... This is about to change on the 31st of December 2020. And as Nick Allen, the CEO of British Meat Processors, uh, the, Meat, the British Meat Processors Association explains, regardless of whether the government secures a trade deal or not, British companies are going to be hit with a tsunami of red tape and extra costs. It really doesn't matter what agreement is reached on tariffs or quotas or standards. Once we're out, the UK becomes a third country. At that point, we have no choice but to introduce border checks and additional customs declarations. He added, The alarming fact is that despite having known this for some time, the government still has no plan in place for exactly how this will be implemented. Even preparedness for no deal and vastly underestimating the additional boots on the ground, this will require, and the sheer scale of delays, disruption, and extra costs that will hit our supply chains. And we've been talking about this for how long? <laughs> it's, it, it's shocking that the government is just not prepared. They seem to just think that they can continue on as normal. Now, there's two... There's two ways that, that come into this. The first is that, as we've said before, uh, the government, and especially Tories and these Brexiteers who are now in charge, know absolutely nothing about the EU and just don't understand how trade uh, is affected between the channel and how the EU comes into play with all its rules and laws and regulations and how that is affected. That they just, quite frankly just don't know the second 
is that there's just no plan in place. That they just think that they can just continue on as normal when you can't in the least. There needs to be some plan in place. But again, that's Brexit in a nutshell. It's just an idea with, well, no shell making it just nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there you go. The other thing is, is that, well, this could be the third one, actually, is that Boris somehow thinks that the EU is going to sort of cave into his demands and allow Britain access to the single market without having to sign up to the rest of the agreements, jurisdiction of the uh, European Court of uh, Judges, all that stuff that somehow Britain's going to be allowed privileged access without any of the responsibilities that come with it. Again, and that's just completely pie-in-the-sky thinking. Anyway, it continues. So, how will this affect trade? Let us, use, let us use the meat industry as an example. British companies currently send between 15% and 40% of their products they produce abroad. And depending on the type of meat, of that 90% is of beef, 97% of that is sheep meat, and 50% of pork meat is sold to the EU. So, as we've said before, um, when people go, oh, we, we don't send that much to the EU, when you actually look at it and break this down by industry, we actually send a lot of stuff to the EU. The EU is our main export market. Why? Because it's so close. We've talked about trade gravity before and how important that is. So, for true exports to third countries, companies need to get an official veterinarian or an OV to inspect every consignment and issue an export health certificate to verify its origin and content. That workload is currently being managed by the available number of OVs in the UK, but it only covers about 10% of the beef trade, about 3% of sheep meat trade and 50% of the trade in pork. After the 31st of December the 2020, the same OVs will have to cover 100% of trade and the government can't tell us how they're going to make this happen. The National Audit Office said the UK border preparations for the EU exit report published in October of 2019 stated that DEFRA estimated the number of uh, export health certificates might increase by over 500%. And this is probably a conservative estimate considering they are needed for all products of animal origin, not just meat. Even if a new army of vets are found, it will still add, uh, add a cost, time and expense to trade with our biggest and nearest trading partner. And while some bigger companies may be able to better absorb that extra expense, the smaller businesses for whom the single market has opened up a world of opportunity will now be disproportionately hard hit. So for small businesses, the cost of an export, uh, export health certificate or custom declaration is the same as a pallet load of their product as it is for a lorry load of the product uh, from a bigger company. An added barrier will be that businesses will also need to get the third country approval and listing of their factories before they're approved to export to the EU. The way the supply chain works currently makes use of the, uh, of the fact that small regular consignments can be grouped into big ones and sent off on a daily basis to customers all over the EU. Inventories and waste are kept low. But more importantly, British, big, big, bleh, British businesses, big and small, can offer a service to our EU customers that uh, competitors halfway around the world cannot. And again, this idea that somehow selling uh, businesses can so, uh, sell, well, they can sell to Vietnam. No, this is actually being the single market has opened up new and different business opportunities that are just not going to be available to selling to like Vietnam. It's just not going to be the same. 
and after the 31st of December 2020, deal or no deal, our competitive advantage is reduced. The simple fact is that no trade deal we have or will ever have outside the EU single market will replace it. So, what's needed? The official vegetarian and, and certification issues, along with several others, are going to be a problem whether we get a deal or not. This means that the government shouldn't be waiting to find out the result of trade talks before it sets about trying to solve these issues. The, uh, the bumper is offering to work with DEFRA, the Department for International Trade and Food Standards Agency, to help formulate and implement a plan to, to address these issues now. So we, have a, so we have a chance of being prepared by the time the transition period ends on the 31st of December. And the way we currently trade with the EU, when with, the way we currently trade with the EU ceases. So uh, you might be surprised to find out that um, their their plans um, they've actually been rejected. The government isn't actually interested in listening to the experts, helping them to provide actual plans to put in place for the disaster they know is coming. And I've said it all before. All we have to do now is just let Brexit happen. And Brexit ostensibly has happened. It happened at the beginning of this year. And, you know, it's, it's going to fail. It, the writing's on the wall. And we just have to let it fail. And then we just go, we told you so. And as was said there in that... Um, article again and time and time we've reiterated this fact we will not get a better trade deal than being in the single market and once again we've yet to hear why brexiteers being outside the single market is good the only reason they've got is that oh we'll be able to do trade deals um with these other countries like peru we mentioned well, currently, our trade with Peru is about 0.3%. That's not going to change. 